<laughs> another day, another thought. Welcome all, welcome all to another edition of the Double Thought Show. Hope everyone is doing great. Hey, as you guys know, I'm RJ here together with my co-host KR. KR, what's up, man? How's everyone doing? Yes, yes. <laughs> hey, thanks to everyone that's checking out this show. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already. We're looking to reach our monetization goals, uh, which will enable us to make better shows, better quality shows. Uh, we can put more money in production. So please subscribe if you have, haven't done so already. We're trying to reach a thousand subs by the end of June. So please support. Uh, remember to share your thoughts and opinions with us, like the video and share it with your friends, your family, and of course your enemies. We have a good one for you today. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's show. Yeah, guys. So what are we going to talk about today? Where do we begin? Yeah, so in today's show, we are going to be focusing on the team. Who are the sneaky, rich NBA players? We usually all hear the stories about NBA players and NFL players going broke within five years, six years after their career. But today we want to highlight the unsung heroes, the guys who got it out the mud and turned shit into sugar. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have used that word because... Well, not maybe. You should have, but okay. <laughs> Manure into sugar. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to highlight... We are going to highlight uh, a couple of Modern, maybe you guys know some of the early 2000 players and also guys in the 70s, guys who, who were getting paid nothing. We always, you know, this, it, uh, RJ, tell me, you always hear that the guys that, that earned like 50, 100 million in their career and they, and they, and they blow it all. They blow it all, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's basically the narrative of athletes that they get a lot of money, they don't know how to manage them and money, manage the money, and then they lose it all. You do see more and more people in the let's let's say newer athletes who have learned from the older athletes, who are moving smarter, who are moving wiser putting their money in the right spaces some people not earning so not using their salary only using endorsement money to live to live on so you do see a change a gradual shift but as you said when we when you talk about players turned business people we think of the usual names the shaquille o'neal's of the world the michael jordan's of the world the um, Magic Johnson, Magic Johnson, LeBron, those type of players, right? But in today's show, we're going to talk about some low-key names, people you, that, uh, as KR said, you might have never even heard of before, but who made money the quote-unquote boring way. They didn't do it in a flashy way. They didn't dance didn't have commercials they did it in a boring way well sometimes moving low-key is better than moving publicly sometimes i would say always but okay that's me <laughs> that's me i live a, I, I i i live in my mama's basement and no one knows no one knows that's the hidden life Anyway, guys, welcome to the Double Thought Show. RJ, do you have something to say about a disclaimer? Yes, guys, we have a disclaimer. It's in the comment section below. Just uh, to make it short, to make it, make it clear, we're here only to provide entertainment, to share our thoughts with you guys and to hear your thoughts and opinions on different subject matters. If you need assistance, legal assistance, or any kind of assistance in your life, life coaching, life advice, business, whatever, 
we urge you to seek the, the presence of the respective professionals in those fields. For everything else related to entertainment, we welcome you to the Double Thought Show. Yes, guys, welcome to the Double Thought Show. And how do we usually welcome? Bora! Bora do show! Showtime! Yes, guys, welcome to the Double Thought Show. We are going to... I mean, this this show is a part of our NBA series. We have a a a a playlist where we have all our NBA topics in there. We have a number of them right now. We have. Now let me see. Let me see if I can share it with you guys so I can. You guys can see. Let me see. Let me let me share my screen with you. So this is the NBA series right now. NBA series where we talk about. We have talked about John ja Moran. We've talked about um, Chris Paul. We've talked uh, so, uh, Rich Paul, not Chris. Oh, we should maybe talk about Chris Paul as well. But we've talked about. As well, uh, uh, the WNBA. That's also part of the 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 web series. It's not in this. It's not in this playlist yet, but it will be there when you click on this show. Anyway, guys. So if you want to dive deeper in our in our views on the NBA and 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 we review clips of NBA related agents. Uh, players and business models, please take a look at that playlist. But today we're going to talk about the unsung heroes. We all know about the great guys. Guys, Michael Jordan, he was the first athlete billionaire. Here's, here's how he makes and spends his millions. Actually, they should put, yeah. LeBron. LeBron officially a billionaire, but today we're going to talk about the unsung heroes, the guys that got it out of the mud and that 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 turned maybe four million to six hundred. I think that's more impressive, to be honest. If you turn four million to six hundred million, and you've asked it, you've asked it more times than it, let's say from a hundred to a million, a hundred million, a hundred million to a billion, for example. Yeah. 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 So so that's it's it's it shows that you have the business mind. Here at the Double Thought Show, we really like to talk about business mentality, uh, business philosophy, but also, of course, law aspects of how to protect yourself at all times. So we have three three guys for you. One of the modern era. And two out of the old ones. Why did we choose the two old ones? Because they have the more impressive story. Imagine you turn six million into a couple of billions. Imagine you turn four million into six hundred million. RJ, you have something to say about that? Yeah, that's definitely very impressive. And I always say, well, it's not. I didn't coin it. But I believe that you, you determine what you, you, let's say the amount of money that comes in, it's not everything. It's how you manage the money. Cash flow is money in, money out. A lot of people, not only athletes, but just people in general, they think they are, so they live in a consumer world. And as a consumer, they are, so as consumers, they are, they just think, oh, I have the money, so I need to buy. I need to buy. I have the money, so I need to buy. Yeah. What do they do? They get a thousand, they spend two thousand. What do you think that he will do when he get a million? He'll spend two million. So what is very interesting to see, and I really like it, is the philosophy that goes into Let's say the mentality that goes into multiplying your or increasing your network. Now, 
One thing we need to take into account, and that's why, Kira, I'm, I'm always, always very skeptic about these articles that, you know, someone is a billionaire, things of that nature. Because what does that actually mean? Technically speaking, it, I mean, it doesn't mean that that person has uh, uh, one billion in cash on the bank. Yeah. What does it actually mean? And oftentimes we talked about valuing companies. So maybe the person is shareholder in three companies and the companies are valued at, let's say, four billion and that person has 25% in all four companies, and then they will calculate it and say, oh, that person is worth $1 billion. But that doesn't mean that that person has the money to, to or that that person has money to, let's say, cash flow to pay his debts because he can still, or expenses, because the person can still be living way, 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 way above the uh, what. The, the level that he should be living on. That being said, it's so that I say that to say that it's not so it's cool to talk about these topics, but it's also important to remember that money and the management of money has it's it's not as simple. There are a lot of things that you need to take into account, a lot of variables. You have the net worth, you have your cash, you have your cash flow. All these terms ref, um, are geared towards different aspects of money management. And I just, yeah, so that's something that we need to take into account. But no matter how you look at it, to turn $4 million into $600 uh, million in itself is something... That I, I mean, uh, <laughs> KR, I think that to, 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 to earn four million is a challenge in itself. <laughs> and the next step to transform it into six million, different 600, uh, 600 million, not bad. It's uh, definitely something that, uh, that interests us here in the Double Touch Show. Maybe we should, we should invite them later on down the roadmap. We invite these people to talk to and un basically understand their mindset because it takes it takes quite um, a lot of discipline and also, like you said, boring. It's bo it's the quote unquote boring way to earn the money. You start a business or you 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 start a couple of uh, franchises and then you build it up. But it's quote unquote boring for the Person, people who usually want to see the flashy stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. Everyone wants to be rich, but no one wants to put in the work. No, they want to look rich. They want people to think that they are rich instead of actually being rich. Yeah. So, and I, I mean, fame, I know some famous broke people. And I know some people who are rich, rich. But you wouldn't, when you look at the car they're driving in, and they will, uh, you'll, you'll be like, come on, you have the money to change the car. And they will tell you, yeah, I have uh, seven, this, this particular person, one particular person, he has like seven restaurants. Uh, he, he manages to, well, not manages, he has like an advisory role in two companies. Mm. And, and I have to say, this person, is retired so he's doing so this is not even his job he's doing this let's say for fun mm -hmm. and he tells me he's, he always says rj why do you think i have money i don't have money by the way but why do you think i have money that's what he always says <laughs> i don't have money by the way but I why do you think I have, why sounds do you think like, I sounds like something i would say to to yeah. other people but yeah. well yeah. i really don't have it i'm broke yeah yeah Living in my mama's basement as usual. So let's start with the first person in this list. A guy that you might know. You guys might know. This is this is the only guy I knew by name. By name. I only know him because he played at the Bulls. I'm a Bulls guy. I've been always been uh, a Bulls yeah. guy. I was a Michael Jordan supporter in his high time, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, yeah, yeah. Continue. You can say. 
Yeah, because he played he played with he played later. He played with yeah, he played later, yeah. Uh, Derek Rose. And when Derek Rose yes, was Derek Rose. Yeah. Yeah. And I was I mean, I always watched Bull fan um Bulls games. Mm. I was a bit I am. I have to still say I am. That <laughs> was. I was. <laughs> you, you almost said you almost said it. Are you slip. Out or are you I going don't know. to I, I, I mean I'm a Pistons fan. I mean I've been a Pistons fan in two thousand since two thousand and four. And that was the best year of the Pistons, let's say post the uh, Detroit Bad Boys era. You, 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 you joined at the uh, at the top. You should have joined at the bottom. Then you can grow with the top. I've tried that with the Browns. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't work. Oh. But um, yeah, so um, yeah, so the the this person used to play with Derrick Rose. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a Bulls fan. I am a Taurus, or at least that's what I've been told. So <laughs> You guys, you don't want you don't want to know my horoscope, man. But they, they call me they call me a bum, but <laughs> what, what, hey, what? That's very that's very specific, man. That's <laughs> month, day, and time slot of being born, man. <laughs> that, oh, we have us a bum right here. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, well, yeah, Bulls, Bulls, and Bulls have always been my team. So, guys, let me reveal to you who, who you're talking about Luol Deng. Luol Deng, do you know? Can you tell something about Luol RJ? Since you're the I'm not gonna put some pressure on you, but since you're the NBA guy. Yeah, you know well, that he's the first. He was a first round pick. Yeah, I don't know what pick he was. Mm, seven. I do know. Seven. I do know that he played with uh, Derrick Rose. He eventually went on to play with other teams, but his best years, I believe, was with the Bulls. Yeah. He played small forward, I believe. Yeah, and small, he, power. small, small in power. Okay, but he, he's like a more leaner guy. He had a good, good shot. Uh, and a good overall role player, definitely. I really like this game. He always played smooth. Uh, I even had him in my fantasy ba um, basketball team at one point, I believe. But this was post his prime years. But yeah, very smooth player. I always liked the guy. So yeah, he he, he started his life in. He was born in Sudan. It's a it's an amazing story by itself. It's it's a story of a, always striving forward, never backwards, never going backwards. He was an Iceland seeker, a political Iceland seeker. Uh, he went to asylum. Asylum, sorry. Uh, yeah. What what did I say? Iceland. Jesus. <laughs> I was like, did he go to Iceland? Iceland. Yeah. Was he? Was he? Was he? Jesus. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, he. Uh, he 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 went to um <laughs> oh the heck anyway um he went to uh the British Islands yeah he, uh, he's a Brit of nationality and after that he went to America for his um he went to he went to Blair Academy and then he got drafted. So that's it's an amazing story. But what what are we going to talk about? So so Luol Deng earned over his career about 200 million. Oh, well, 136, sorry. 136 million he earned over overall. During that time, he uh, he reinvested his money. He really invested his money. He started his own, according to his own website. 
Let me share it with you guys. The investment, the D3 N9. D3 N9 investment fund, which is a diversified private fund that leverages our institutional relationship ships to access to access high caliber deal flow. We invest in both public and private markets with holdings in committees, real estate, private equity, and venture capital. We partner with the best private equity, venture capital, and real estate investment funds in the world. Acquisitions. D3N9 focuses on opportunistic and, and acquisition opportunities, but both domestic and international. While we are open to evaluating opportunities across all asset classes, we typically invest in single and multifamily residential. So it already shows you. He's telling you what he's into. Real estate. The cash flow. We, all, we always hear guys like um, Cordon talking about cash flow, how, how, it, how it helps you, uh, how investing in real estate helps you to get that cash flow. So his main thing is the cash flow. If you go to his D3N9 website, you will also see that he's the chairman, Luol Deng, and he has a co-founder, which is Dave Gross. You always have to have a, it's always handy to have a knowledgeable co-founder in these situations. Yeah. Someone who can assist you because I, I mean, you spent, don't forget, guys, you spent your first 10,000 hours to become a better basketball player. So you don't have enough time to spend on learning these things. But after your career, you have to spend another 10,000 hours to develop yourself, to become an entrepreneur. Or at least I hope you become one. Or you can become also a broadcaster someone who's on the, uh, let's say, uh, on shows, you can also make your money like that. But a lot of NBA players choose to become entrepreneurs by themselves because they have the capital. It's not like they lack the capital. At least I hope you, you don't blow it during your career and then find out at um, first day of retirement, eh, where's my money? Yeah, 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 100%, man. And... <clears throat> you know what's interesting? There are various investment strategies you can take. But I always say it's good to whatever investment strategies you take, you, you choose. You need to stick to it. Don't jump from one to the other. Uh, some people will say cash flow. Other people will flip. Other people. So, I mean, it's a, this, it's a debate. Cash is king. Uh, cash flow is king. And no one's talking about queens out here. Okay. Uh, you also have like... <laughs> oh, is this a shot to the queens? No. I'm, I mean, <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm, just no, kidding. I'm following. I, I got into contact. I was checking out a show of, I don't know if you know Max Maxwell, but he is a wholesaler. He wholesales real estate. So that's an interesting business model in itself. Mm. And on his show, I, I, he interviewed on his podcast, I have to say, on his YouTube channel. He interviewed a, a woman by the name of Michelle Murray. And her channel is Michelle D. Murray. And she also did wholesaling, but she did a very impressive thing with her company. She standardized it. And her philosophy was choose a company, build it fire yourself from different positions you know you you create process and systems and and put people to work so you can get out and with that money so when you have that let's say cash cow you can proceed to other ventures so a lot of ways to get there and i mean the i mean blue Deng is poised man he's been poised as a player and 
I wasn't, I didn't know that he was doing what he was doing. But I can't say I'm surprised. That's his MO, move in silence and, and successfully. Real, real G's move in silence, they say. Yeah, yeah. Well, really? then there, there are a lot of fake ones out there. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. We, we, open your Instagram so, and you'll see. Some cues, some cues. <laughs> Looks like a G, but it's not. <laughs> well, the G ain't, ain't them. Uh, anyway. Uh, so this is these are the earnings of Luol Deng during his career. Let me go a bit down. So he earned 167 million and a half, but let's let's round it up to uh, nine uh, nine uh, 69 uh, 169 million over his whole career, and he turned that into an astounding. Let me go here. 125 million portfolio yeah so that's that's quite impressive that's that's quite that's quite an amount don't forget guys they always put the earnings that the the guys earn they never put the taxes they pay so he's actually earned less yeah the contract and... says we make 50 million but you get if you're unlucky you get maybe maybe 25 30. Yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think less taking into account as well that as a player uh, you, I mean his house is probably more expensive than the average house his, his living expenses are, are above average taking into account that as an athlete you need to pay for you know your team probably provides certain services and support but you yourself also need to invest in your body and your health so yeah, I mean, it costs to be an athlete. You have yeah. to invest in yourself to to be the best. But one thing I want to I want to highlight before you before you um, I, th I think it's a it's an interesting way of thinking. Uh, you you highlighted before about creating processes because I always say that um, if if as a manager you become well not a best manager depending on your position you have to become obsolete. If you if you create the processes as good as you think they should projects or whatever, you should become obsolete in the process. You shouldn't be there. Then then your job is done, and they can yeah. fire me. But I'm, I mean I'm I'm in my mama's basement, so I'm 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 not gonna say I'm unemployed. Probably I'm unemployed. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'm unemployed. Yeah, maybe I should be unemployed. Anyway, so you you create processes in which you are not required to be part of and then that's that's what you want because that means that the process works how it should yeah this is an important thing in that but to bring it back to Luol, 125 million and growing it's, it's a great great amount this it is it's an amazing because probably he has a, a smaller group and and with a great co-founder Dave Gross, who's a uh, Columbia University graduate, he, he he popped off. He popped off. I mean, this is uh, this is a great one. Anyway, before we continue, guys, as you know, here at the Double Thought Show, we always ask you to rate. And subscribe on our channel as we're trying to spread the word. Yes, yes, the gospel. <laughs> <laughs> we are, I mean, guys, I mean, we see that about 95% of you are subscribed to the channel, not subscribed to the channel. Uh, ninety-five percent, ninety-five percent of the viewers are not subscribed to the channel. Even returning viewers, we would like to ask you to to subscribe. I mean, it helps us reach our goal. And in reaching our goal, we can basically further develop the channel. We have plans. We have plans ready. 
But in order to continue growing and also continue to evolve as a channel, as a network, we need you guys to subscribe and help us to reach our goal. Guy, uh, RJ, what is, a, what is the goal we're trying to reach? Yes, we're trying to reach the first, let's say, it's not the first goal, but a very important one, which is to reach a thousand subs so we can get monetized. At this particular point in time, we have approximately 750 to go, more or less. Uh, we want to reach it by the end of June, which is very short time. Uh, and as Kara said, a lot of people who are watching aren't subscribed. And not only watching, we're talking about those that rewatch the the, the, uh, our videos. So it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, but it would mean a lot to us. If, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe so we can get monetized and uh, which will enable us to produce better shows, more frequent shows, uh, because then we'd be able to outsource certain tasks as well in order to level up the quality, but also the quantity of our shows. Yes, guys, but in the closing, we always say the following. Be sure to hit notification bell so you're always notified about every video we post and also don't forget to share our videos with your friends families your coach your financial advisor <laughs> and of course distract your enemies with your videos so you can steal their business plan which we don't advise, but you could. <coughs> we, we, we are not advising anyone. Look at the disclaimer. This is not an advice. We're not giving. Anyway. Let's continue with the show. Yes. The second person we are going to highlight in this list of unsung heroes Have you heard of him before since you're a Pistons fan? Uh, yes, before before even before before you even imagined to being here. Uh, no, I did not. I have to say I might have because I've seen some I've seen a lot of Pistons documentaries. But I don't I'm not good with names. I only know so during that time, uh, Joe Dumars, Isaiah Thomas, of course. Um, Dennis Rodman played as well. I forgot the center's name. So I know a lot of names, but I don't know um, this dude's name. This guy was a seventh, uh, sorry, a seventh overall pick, uh, of course, in the first round in 1979. So this old school, very old school. His nickname is The Microwave. The reason why he got his name is because his ability to scroll quickly off the bench. So he was six man in a sense. So you, you put him in, put him in for the for the work. You need you need you need to put in some work. You you you, you always have a, a, you hope to have someone on the bench who you, you put them in and they get you back in the game. His name is Vinny Johnson. Vinny Johnson. He was a key, key player as a six-man at the Detroit Pistons. Um, and he was part of the 1989 team and the 1990 team that became champions. So it's, it, it's, he, he, he was legit. He was legit. During his time... Let me share you guys so you can see who Vinny Johnson is. Vinny, Vinny, you, look at Vinny here, man. Pistons. Oh, yeah, that's the, it was a six man, right? Yeah, he's the six man. Yeah. The microwave. The microwave. So during his time, during his time, um, During his time uh, at um, a 
according to Hoops Hype, during his time, he played for Pistons. He, I think this is there's something off with this. Not sure. Let me see. Let me see if um, let me take a look real quick. Let me take a look real quick. He played for the Supersonics, Detroit Pistons, and the uh, San Antonio Spurs. Yes. So, so he earned about four million during his uh, during his career. He, not a not a big earner. About six. Sorry. So uh, there is some some there is some data missing here. Maybe it's because it's before the nineties. That's why he uh, they they haven't added it. But he earned about six million during his career. Which three uh, is um, three is uh, recorded three point one, and after his career, that's when the real run begins because Finney built a enterprise. He built one of the greatest enterprises in Detroit. He started a D Pistons group. He started a Pistons group and launched the Piston Automotive, Automotive, which is uh, which was part of the Pistons group, and the the Pistons Automotive. Automotive was focusing on bu building uh, parts for cars. At the end, today, he's worth, guys, listen to this, he's worth 400 million. He built out the Pistons group. To a multi billion company. Even now, they are focusing on innovation. I mean, I mean, you gotta you gotta continue innovating because the car industry is also changing. They have different brands at the Pistons Group. By the way, it's still the same colors. Still the, the, also the same colors that the Pistons have. So he, he, he stayed on brand. What, what brands do they have? They have Piston Automotive. They have Irvin. They have Detroit Thermal Systems. A-Lava. As you can see here, they have a thousand plus team members, nine facilities that cover one one point four million square feet. So what does Irving do? Irving is focusing on anything that can be imagined that can be achieved. That's what they say. It is uh it it is with this spirit that Irving continues today, applying decades of experience in the automotive interior technologies to provide design, engineering, and manufacturing solutions to multitude of industries spanning the globe. Irving's commitment to excellence began uh, with uh, innovative engineering and design that carries through today to every quality component and system, earning Irvin the reputation as an industry leader. So that has, Irvin has 9,000 9, team members. By the way, the Pistons group has, uh, the Pistons Automotive has 1,000. And they are the largest uh, value add uh, assembly supplier. And they build world class assemblies for America's top manufacturers and have become the world-class center of assembly innovation. So they are they are putting in work as well. You also have the Detroit Thermal System, 
DTS believes that hey, ha, that was hey, that show. That was that show. DTS believes that the uh, that delivering automotive comfort and building uh, customer confidence both begin with exceptional manufacturing. We develop and manufacture high quality climate control system systems and components, employing a diverse workforce. We utilize the state of the art technology and proven manufacturer. So it's clear that he's focusing at 700, uh, uh, 700 team members plus. It's a lot of automotive focus. The focus is mainly on automotive, except for Elava. Elava is the largest made in America cover producer in the betting industry as a non-automotive wing of Pistons Group. Elava's state-of-art equipment combined with quality inspections creates high-performance zipper covers, quilted components and apparel with over 100 years of experience. Their ex uh, expertise has been utilized throughout the industry in contract manufacturing, including product assembly, role packing, and DTC fulfillment. This has a thousand team members. So this is a very, very large, very large company, RJ. Yeah. Basically a corporate company, right? So yeah. building it is one thing, but we talked about systems at the beginning of the show, having systems in place, making it, giving the corporate structure with probably C-suite executives. Of course, Detroit is also referred to as the motor city, especially in the past. It was the, cent the center perhaps of automotive production, which is also why the team is called Pistons. The previous, the previous logo of the Detroit Pistons was a horse with the piston on the side. So it's clear that, that, that he took the, not only the Pistons color, as you mentioned, but he also took the, the estate true to the, to the, should I say, the, the culture, the custom, the industry, the one of the original industry of Detroit. You can see that in the company, the, uh, the fact that the companies have invested in, or I think four, three or four of the total companies are automotive companies, with Alava being an, ex an exemption. But... That's definitely, it's very impressive. Again, the boring way. Who wants to do that? Well, who wants to do that? Basically, basically, Vinny retired. Let me see if I can find it real quick. He retired in, it seems, 92, 93. I'm not sure. By the way, they retired. The business retired his, his number. Yeah, he was a good player. Number 15. Yeah, number now 15. that I saw the play, yeah, he was a he was a good player. Yeah. Sometimes you got you gotta you gotta know your your role. If your role is a six man, be the best six man you can be. Yeah, well, the Pistons, the Bad Boys Piston team was something else. They were yeah, but he could have chosen to go to another another team to 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 be the starter. Yeah, but that didn't happen back then as it does. No. Right now, okay, okay, okay. Back then, you had people. The players did feel, let's say, more loyalty to the team mm. until they got, <laughs> until the team betrayed their trust, of course. But yeah, they. So you had, you had. That was a very impressive team, a very tough team, very tough team, the Detroit Pistons. So it wasn't the first five. It wasn't the first seven. Um, what's the center's name? They had two big, you had the Horace, um, you had a Horace, one of the Horace brothers played there. Um, but no, man, they, they had a definitely a very good team. 
And again, the toughness, Detroit prides themselves on being tough, thick skinned, thick skinned. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's what, that's what I like about, that's what KR, that's why I became a Detroit Pistons fan. This mm. was not during the, of course, the bad boy I, era. I thought you were a thug. That's why you were okay. Well, I guess not. No, this was during the. This wasn't during the bad boys era. It was mm. when you had Chauncey Billups, uh, Tayshawn Prince, Rip Hamilton, and the two Bens, Ben Wallace. Oh no, two Wallaces, Ben Wallace and Rashid Wallace. Rashid. Yeah. You had Stucky. You had Stucky. Oh man, that was a very great team. But they also had that toughness with them, that underdog mentality with them. You know, people didn't, Chip they were good. The they were good, but none of them were superstars. Now, we could have had a superstar, but that's a different. That's just, oh man, they skipped on Carmelo Anthony. They skipped on Carmelo Anthony and chose Darko Milicic, I guess his name was, who was a center because they needed a backup center back then. Well, that guy was a big flop. And so you had LeBron, but we could, I think they had, uh, I don't know which, so you can imagine they were at the top, they were in the, in the prime and they had, I think it was the first pick. Let me just check this out. It was the first pick. Guys, while, while RG is searching for, for the information about the failure of picking Second. talent, I didn't say talent at no point in time. I said dark Milicic. I didn't say talent. No, no, no. I said the failure in picking okay. talent. That's okay. what I said. You gotta listen. Okay. I'm saying it's not I, I'm saying you can't call that person talent. That's all I'm saying. But okay. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying picking the right people then. Who <laughs> whatever it is. Let's take a look at the evolution of the Pistons group. They started in 1996 with one million. And then it turned into 2010, 326 to 2015. Five years later, they tripled, more than tripled, quadrupled their amount. I think this is revenue. It doesn't say, I think this is revenue. Quadrupled the amount in five years. And then 2017, one, uh, so 1.7. 1.75 billion 2019 2.88 2020 2.9 2021 2.9 2022 3.2 so they they have been building a, a, a company that's that's long lasting and i don't i, I think the, these articles now are from it says 2022, but usually you don't really know how much money person has. So probably he has more than 400 million. Yeah. Probably it's worth more. So it's always a rough estimation, right? It's a guesstimation that people try to make. Well, shout out to Vinny, man. He, he built a great company. Maybe we also should in, in, interview him later on down the line. Seems yeah. like a very well, great business mind. We interview him. We can interview Joe Dumars, who we talked about a couple of shows back, who played uh, shooting guard for the Pistons and who is one of the people in, jar in charge. Or maybe at the time of the release of this show, was in charge <laughs> with John Moran's punishment. Oh because really? He, yeah, yeah, and mm. yeah. So that's also he was the previous. Maybe we uh, should interview Ja. No, we don't. <laughs> ja, show us, show us your blicky. <laughs> <No. laughs> hey, we gotta go viral, right? <laughs> no, no, not like that, man. <laughs> not like that. Uh, hey, man. <laughs> all jokes, yeah. no, man. <laughs> no, but yeah, so Joe Dumars is one of them, and Isaiah Thomas as well. He's a commentator. So they are all good, but I don't think, I mean, the the last two I named were better known, but this, I think that he is the richest one, right? I think so. Uh, he No, no, he's not the richest one of our list. No, no, the richest one 
of the other Detroit players. So oh, I mentioned oh. a couple of them that are, I mean, is definitely better than Dennis Rodman, right? So <laughs> it's. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so so let's continue. Let's continue with the show because we're not taking shots at Dennis. Dennis, no, it's a joke, man. It's a joke. Yeah, I know it's a joke. I know it's a joke. People will clip you and and make it as if you're taking real shots. Anyway, taking out of context, that's how they usually do. That's this what they do. Me. Just that's to be clear, guys, me. when KR says taking shots. We're not talking about the John Moran story. We're past that story. We're talking about, we're talking about figuratively speaking. <laughs> well, if we're not, anyway, let's continue. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go back on that. So we are going to talk about the last guy, the last guy in the list. He was... Drafted by the Milwaukee Bucks, played for the LA Clippers, and then went back to Milwaukee Bucks. He was drafted in 1975. Drafted in 1975. First round overall pick. They say he has earned an average three hundred and fifty thousand a year, totaling over four million throughout his twelve-year career. Could you imagine? The guy plays twelve years and only got. Imagine these. The, I think the, the the players of today. I think we have a uh, guy. We have a show about about people. People jumping on the barbed wire so the next generation can can um, can prosper. But this is it's 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 amazing if you look at the numbers right here. Twelve years and only got four million. In total. In total. And right now, if you play twelve years, you probably will reach easily three hundred. Yeah. Four probably four four contracts. Depending on the quality. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're a bum, you're a bum. You got to be lucky if we give you some tacos. Anyway, the guy we are going to talk about next is Junior Bridgman. Junior Bridgman. Junior was... Overall, a small forward or a shooting guard. He also owns, these days, the Ebony and Jets magazine. But before he did all this, he started dabbling In franchises, fast food franchises. Guys, listen to this. During the off seasons of his playing career, Richmond worked and learned the business model of Wendy's fast food restaurant franchise. So he didn't go off and started doing weird stuff in the off season. He just went there. This, this is a man with a plan. After retiring from the NBA, he invested in the franchise and eventually owned over 100 various Wendy's and Chili's restaurants before selling it in 2016. How many exactly did he have? Let me show you guys. Let me zoom in a little bit as well. In the beginning of the franchise empire, by the time he retired, he already purchased three Wendy's. 
He also became the CEO of various companies operating over 450 restaurants in 20 states, including 263 Wendy's and 123 Chili's restaurants. RJ. Yes. Boring way, man. Boring way. Boring way, man. You just put oh. money in a... Yeah, man. The money of... machine. The boring way is the money machine. You guys are trying to flash. Yeah. Now, I do, I do have to say that the restaurant business is a very risky business. However, with a Wendy's, that's a chain. So it that's a different it, business. It's a it different, totally business. different ones. Yeah. It's a different I business. Tried. It's a... It's uh, Wendy's, so you recognize it in every city, every state, wherever you are, you know it's a Wendy's. And you do need to have, because do you do need to have like a minimum amount of investment money, starting, cap um, starting capital to invest at the beginning. And if you have a franchise such as a Wendy's, a McDonald's, Burger King, or any other franchise, you need to be a. You need to maintain. You need to be able to maintain the the um, what's the quality and the standards is the word I was looking for of the groups of the of the company. So guys, if you don't, if you didn't know, when you let's say you get you become the owner of a Wendy's or McDonald's or whatever, you have like you, you get like this thick binder. Well, I guess now they do it just by mail, right? But in it, it says exactly how everything should be structured, how the place should look, so how the you know, the restaurant should be structured, what the employees should wear, how the training should be, how the fries should be fries, how the burger should be. Um, should be prepared, everything to the detail. And occasionally, some uh, someone would come from the head office to check and see whether or not you're complying with the standards. But, and that seems, uh, so on the one hand, that seems very burdensome, right? You're like, I just want to run my business. However, if you can do that, you're allowed to place and, and you're allowed to place the Wendy's sign on your company or BK or any other company, well-known fast food franchise or any company for that matter that operates with this business model. You will attract people from day one because they know what they're going to get. So it was a very good investment. I mean, he could have started his own restaurant, frozen yogurt or something. I don't know, but. Then you need to build a name, build a brand, get to know familiarity, and that build trust. Even, build trust. And even if you do, that would only be in the, let's say, for the group of people that know you. That's and it's probably the the community in which the company is, the the restaurant is established. So, it made some smart moves. I mean, when you look at Shaq, I believe Michael, um, Magic Johnson as well. They all have like some equity in fast food chains in one shape or the other. They don't put all their money in it, but I mean. People are going to eat. People are going to eat and they're going to eat fast food as well. Yeah. So, so Bridgman also as a CEO uh, became uh, of, the, of the Bridgman Foods Inc. Became in 2017 a bottler for the Coca-Cola company. And in 2018, he signed a letter of intent to buying operations, bottling operations in, 2000, uh, in, in Canada. In 2020, like I said before, he bought up the Ebon, Ebony and Jet magazines for uh, 40 million after both of them declared bankruptcy early in the year. In 2022, Mana Capital Partners, an investment firm co-founded by Bridgman, announced that the firm had partnered with Bulk Operations 
to construct and operate an integrated secondary aluminum mill in Los Lunas, New Mexico. Later that year, in October 2022, Alabama Governor Kay Ivey announced that Mana Capital Partners would invest in a bottling facility to be located in Hope Hall, Alabama, and operated by affiliate Mana Beverages and Ventures. So this man is still on the run. Oh, by the way, did I say how much he turned that into? The 300000 a year? The $4 million? He turned that into $600 million. Yeah, you did say it. Oh, I did. Okay. Yeah. okay. Maybe if you guys didn't hear in the beginning, I'm not, I wasn't sure, but turn it into 600 million. And, and that's also counting. Great businessman. This is how you make it work the boring way. Yeah. yeah it's like, yeah, it's like, um, it's like, again, systems and processes. A lot of times we think that we need to market. We need more, we need to upgrade the marketing, invest more in marketing, invest more in acquisition. While oftentimes it's just the system and processes. So analyze your business. What are the different processes? What is the process for acquiring customers? The process for billing, the process for building something or developing something, the process for processing customer complaints and when you streamline the processes you integrate them and then you 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 uh, automate them you standardize them you'll be able to grow you'll be able to scale and a lot of people KR have started businesses or they've invested in money here and there but the fruits Speak for themselves. You can call yourself whatever you want, master, investor, a serial entrepreneur, whatever, but the fruits speak for themselves. And he shows receipt, he receipts. He has the receipts, which is a pretty, pretty cool thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With that being said, before we close the show, um, just a quick recap. In today's show, we talked about Three. Before you continue, do you have anything else to say before we close? I don't have anything else to say before okay. we close. Okay. I just said what I need, what I wanted to say. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, so on today's show, we talked about three low key, fairly low key players um, who are not mentioned as great businessmen in the day-to-day -day are not mentioned as um, they're good players, but not great players. They are not uh, being debated over in the debate shows. However, their track rec they have a proven track record um, post their NBA career, uh, earning a good amount of money the boring way, investing in companies, building building companies, and staying low-key uh, with the mentality that being rich is better than being famous. Uh, we can learn a lot about these people. The things we can learn about is uh, uh, that it's not the money that you make during your career that will make you rich necessarily, but it's what you do with it that will make you rich. Uh, and what you do with it, in order to do it, you need to have the right people around you because you can't do it alone. You need to think as a business owner and think on and, and work on the business instead of always in the business. You need to be able to step back and direct how business should be ran and eventually even Pay someone to take that role over for you to be the manager of your company so you can sit back and make different, uh, more strategic decisions. Uh, these are pretty inspiring stories to me. I think that 
we can we can uh, agree on that let us know in the comment section below if you guys want us to cover more of these type of shows uh, because we certainly find it interesting as Kara said we'll, we'll, we will also try to get people on board for the let's say interview these type, types of people in the future just to pick their brains but let us know whether you like it or not and you let us you let us know by uh, pressing that like button don't forget to press the like button guys and share it the video as well and comment and comment of course comment let us know what you think whether do you do you agree with our takes do you have different takes do you know of other players or other people who you who you think that yeah you know you should cover these these guys because they or, or these these women because they know how to do their thing so yeah let us know it's been a pleasure uh with that being said guys thanks to everyone that has tuned in to today's show Whatever your thoughts are, please let us know in the comment section below. Remember, guys, we have a goal. We want to reach a 1,000 subs by the end of June of this year, which means in a couple of weeks. If everyone that re-watches our show subscribe, we will get there in no time. So it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, but it would mean a lot to us if you do. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. And if you have friends are also following us ask them to subscribe as well this is very important to us because we'll be able to provide better quality shows to you uh, and we we really enjoy it and we like the feedback we're receiving we only want to give more uh, uh, to you as our supporters remember to check us out on our socials as well at double touch show on facebook and instagram and as kr always says at the end of the show but i can only show you the door and behind the door is always the low key person, the low key person might be the real baller in the room. You never know. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, we actually know it's Thor that's the real baller. But in any case, check us out. Uh, tune into today's uh, into the next show. Uh, it's been a pleasure serving you once more, and we'll see each other in the next one. Until next time, peace.